everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne, and today I'll be doing an overview on this MSI X99S Gaming 7 motherboard. And this is exciting because this is the first piece to my next epic gaming slash editing build. So look forward to the build video once I have all the other parts. Let's take a look at some of the box details before we open this bad boy up. So, this comes with an LGA 2011 version 3 board with the Intel X99 Express chipset and the S or the Express stands for the SATA Express feature. I'll go more into detail about that in just a bit. But first, let's turn it around to the back. Alrighty, so you get Audio Boost 2. It's uh, to give you more power for pushing high-end audio gear, and there's also a line of isolation to separate the electrical side of the audio circuit, which is very fancy, and I saw that on the Gaming 5 too, I believe. And then you also get Killer E2205 Gigabit LAN, which prioritizes game traffic to give you lag-free play, and there's also USB power. This delivers stable 5 volts when connecting multiple USB devices. You can also do multi-GPU setups, and you even get sound Sound Blaster Cinema 2, and this is for fine tuning your sound. There's software included, and there's also an M.2 SATA slot on the motherboard. And one last thing is you get a six months free subscription to XSplit for game streaming. I use OBS, but hey, some of you might find XSplit more useful. Here's everything you get in the box, the motherboard itself, which I'll go over in more detail in just a bit, but let's see all of them accessories that you get. <laughs> Alrighty, so first of all, you get an MSI case badge, as well as a door hanger. It says, I'm sorry, busy gaming. It should just be busy gaming, go away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, it's nice of them to include that. And then there's also a look at their other products, and I suppose Teams maybe that they sponsor, but here it is. And this is your driver and utility CD. So if you don't decide to download everything on their website, this might be handy for you if you have a five and a quarter inch optical drive. Alrighty, now moving right along, here is a quick install guide, however, you will find everything in this handy dandy user guide. It is very detailed. The post-its do not come with it. I would uh, look at this for things like population rules on 117, I believe. Here are all of the memory population rules. Very handy to have. And then here is the software and application user guide. More in depth, I suppose, on that. And then let's take a look at some of the cables, shall we? So this is the audio power adapter for plugging onto your motherboard to increase the power for the high-end audio. So this end plugs into the motherboard and this end, of course, into your uh, Molex plug on your power supply. You also get two SLI flexible bridges. Some of you prefer the harder ones, but I mean, these are still very useful. You get two of them, so very nice of them to include that. And you also get Let's see, in each bag set, you get two SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, and one is an L-shaped connector and the other a straight plug. And it would have been nice if they provided for you 10 of them, but you do get six, and I'm sure most of us probably won't be using more than the provided amount. Now if we look at the last of the accessories, so this is an MSI M connector. So if those of you who have ASUS board or know someone who does, it's like the Q connector. It's for front panel plugs. It's to make things easier for you so you don't have to search, you know, with your eyes, all those tiny little plug locations. <laughs> anyway, um, and here is an IO shield. I like that it has a red and black color scheme going on, matches the rest of the board. And also there's foam padding on the back. That's not the case for every single one of these I've seen, so it's definitely a nice touch. Now, last but not least is this. Very awesome thing. <laughs> this is uh, basically label set for your SATA cable, so you know which cable goes where. For example, oh, this one goes to my SSD, this one goes to my you know, 3.5 inch, this one goes to blah, 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 blah. Alrighty, so you get the idea. Here's a look at the back of the motherboard first. As you can tell, it comes with a black PCB, which is welcome in the gamers, well, building world. <laughs> and this is an ATX form factor motherboard measuring 305 millimeters or 12 inches by 244 millimeters or 9.6 inches. Now let's flip it around to the front. 
This motherboard comes in a mostly black layout with some red accents on the VRM cooler as well as the PCH cooler, which stands for Platform Controller Hub for those of you who didn't know. And it comes with five four pin fan headers. So you get one CPU fan header here, another one here, a system fan connector here, and another system fan connector here, and another one right here. Here's a closer look at the CPU socket. Once again, this is the LJ2011 V3 CPU socket. Some of you may call it version 3 or revision 3, what have you. And flanking it, you get, wow, eight. Eight DDR4 DIMM slots. I'm just so used to seeing the four, and um, it's quad channel memory supporting up to 128 gigabytes, and you get a stock clock rate of 2133 megahertz, and it's capable of pushing DIMMs to 3333 megahertz overclocked. And the DIMMs also support non ECC unbuffered memory, and here's a closer look at the CPU Fan 2 connector. Here's the heatsink above the Intel X99 Express chipset with MSI logo, and I like that this popped out edge looks kind of like gills or ventilation. <laughs> and next to that right here, kind of overshadowed, but not to be beat, that is the M.2 Gen 3 X4 SATA slot. It supports both PCIe based and SATA based SSDs, and you get a performance of up to 10 gigabits per second with M.2 PCIe SSDs and 6 gigabits per second with M.2 SATA SSDs. You get four PCIe 3.0 x16 slots. It supports three-way AMD Crossfire or three-way NVIDIA SLI. The population rules differ depending on if your CPU supports 40 or 28 PCIe lanes. Be sure to refer to your manual, it'll tell you all about it. But for three-way configs, um, for 40 PCIe lanes, it's x16, x16, x0, x8. And for 28 PCIe lanes, it's x8, 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 and x0. And you also get two PCIe 2.0 X1 slots, and I may use this for a RAID card, um, but that's in the future. <laughs> and there is a CMOS battery right here. On the top edge of the motherboard, you get an 8-pin CPU power port, as well as a closer look at the CPU Fan 1 connector and the System Fan 1 connector next to that. On the right side of the motherboard, this piece here is the 24-pin main power connector. And beneath that, we have two USB 3.0 connectors. The one above it is marked red, and that means it supports MSI Supercharger. It lets you charge your mobile devices at a more efficient and faster rate. When the Supercharger app is turned on, be aware that the data transmission and syncing will be disabled. And beneath that are your SATA ports. You get 10 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. These are clearly labeled for SATA 1 and 2, SATA 3 and 4, 7 and 8, and 9 and 10. And just so you know, SATA 1 to 6 support RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10, but SATA 7 to 10 only support IDE and AHCI modes. On the bottom edge of the motherboard is the System Fan 2, and next to that, these are your SATA 5 and 6 connectors, and you must be wondering, what is that little weird one right there? <laughs> well, this is for your SATA Express connection, so you can get up to 10 gigabit per second speeds. Now, above the SATA connectors, this is your front panel connector, one of them, there's two of them. And then above that, there it is, right beneath the uh, heatsink here. To the left, this is the chassis intrusion connector. So you must be wondering, what the heck is that? Well, if your PC is opened, a warning message will flash on the screen, so you know if your parts are being stolen, which is very useful if, I guess, you connect it. And um, you can enter your BIOS to clear the record if it's yourself. <laughs> and next to the chassis intrusion connector is the clear CMOS jumper. And let's go ahead and move to the right of the clear CMOS jumper. This is the two-digit debug code LED, so it'll tell you what's wrong and look in your manual to figure it out. Left of the system panel connector, this is the slow mode booting jumper. It's used for LN2 cooling solution for extreme overclocking, so take care. And <laughs> Then above that, this switch right here, this is the multi BIOS switch, so you get two BIOS modes. If one crashes, you can switch to the other for booting. Beep beep. Next to the SATA ports, these are your two USB 2.0 connectors, and then here is your second system panel connector. They're usually together, but this is odd. Anyway, and next to that, these are three awesome looking buttons. 
the reset and the power. And I'm going to find the power really useful for when I test boot before I put this uh, system into an actual case. Very useful. And next to that is the OC Genie button. So once you depress it, there we go. That means it's on. We're just going to undepress it. <laughs> All right, so what is the OC Genie? It uh, will overclock your system by the push of this one button. Makes things very easy. And then moving right along, here is your System Fan 3 connector. And next to that, this is the direct audio power connector. So plug the adapter in here, and then the other end, obviously, to your power supply. And then here is the front panel audio connector. And you get a very noticeable line of isolation here, like I talked about for the audio boost. I really like that they include this line of brown transparent squares here, and this is to show you how thick the PCB is. And on the other end, it says it is eight layers thick. Very cool. Now then, moving right along, this is the TPM module connector, and then up here at the top, this is your audio power switch to switch between onboard power and direct power. Here's a look at the rear I.O. This is the PS2 connector for connecting a PS2 master keyboard if you prefer that connection type. Now beneath that you get two USB 2.0 ports and a clear CMOS button for those of you who need help to recover after failed overclocking attempts. Now then, these are two, four, six USB 3.0 ports and they're red as you can see, no doubt for the MSI supercharger. And then next to that, this tall guy, <laughs> the top one is the LAN port with the killer E2205 gigabit LAN controller and you get an additional two USB 3.0 ports. That is so many on this motherboard. <laughs> and last but not least, these are your audio ports. So you get five OFC, which stands for oxygen-free copper for better conductivity, audio jacks. And then also an audio spidiff out. And this has the Realtek ALC 1150 codec with eight channel 7.1 HD audio. I didn't see any display ports, but you're probably plugging into the ones on your graphics card anyway. Well, that wraps it up for this video on the MSI X99S Gaming 7 motherboard. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media, Joanne Techlover Facebook fan page, Joanne Techlover again on Twitter, and Joanne Techlover once more on Instagram. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so you can help expand this channel and feed this techie. Oh, and I started up a new channel called JTL Lifestyle. It's where I talk about everyday random gadgets in your life. Or in my life. One last thing, a storeenvy.com where I can go ahead and purchase my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints. I guess all that's left to say is bye bye!